All right, guys, so now we're going to start going over the image annotation process. So uh, previously I said take 100 images, maybe just take 10, because what I really want you to do is collect some images, annotate them, and run them through the model to make sure that everything's working properly. I don't know why it wouldn't be working properly, but just in case, maybe just start with 10 images, all right? So assuming that your images are in the images directory, uh, your annotations will be stored as JSON files, and they will go into the annotated directory. So um, let's start by opening up Label Me. And this is what you should see. Uh, we can set our, we can open our images directory, and we can also set our annotation directory. So if you go to File, Change Output Directory, by default, it goes into images. We can set that to annotated. And then you'll see, now that I set it to annotated, it sees all those JSON files, and it's loaded all the annotations uh, for me here. So annotation is very simple. All we really care about are the, the labels that we create. So let me show you an example of how to annotate an image. You would say, create polygons. And you just start by going through and building all of these points. Now this can be very time consuming. If you want to use a different annotation tool, you can if you want, but it's up to you to figure out how to make it work with the code that, I already, that I've already created. Um, and technically it would be as simple as replacing the JSON file and making sure that the, the dictionary that we build later on uh, looks the exact same as this one but that is up to you whether you want to do that or not so sometimes i and i chose to annotate the circle here is because sometimes you want to create let's say i want to create a point right here um, or maybe okay i put a point here and i want to create a point between these two and notice how it immediately like i'm just hovering over and it auto corrects it like it auto completes the polygon and I'm not able to put, put an extra point, and this will happen occasionally. So what you want to do is create a point somewhere off in space and then connect these two. And then it'll bring it up. You want to set it to circle or just type it in if it's not already there. And you can go into edit polygons. So you can drag this point between the two. So now you can complete the mask and you can do that and kind of like post process a lot of your masks to make sure like, so maybe I want to make this go in a little bit more. Um, this looks fine, right? And this will start creating all of your masks. So now we can save this. Just want to get that there. Okay, so let's save. Because it's already there, um, it's saved automatically, but it would be save as, and you put like my file dot JSON, whatever. And you would save it and annotate it. So, Let's see. Oh, actually, let's take a look at what those JSON files will look like. So now that you're in here, a JSON file is really just, um, it's just like a dictionary. I mean, it can be a dictionary of dictionaries. It can be whatever. But um, normally, if you were to think about this in Python, it's a dictionary that maps keys to values. So within here, you can see, well, this is a dict with version flags, shapes, and within shapes, the, the keys is a list of dictionaries. So what we see here is we've got a star, and then we have all the corresponding points in the star. That dictionary ends. We have a new one that contains triangle, um, and those are the three points that make the triangle, so on and so forth. You guys get the idea. And eventually, and that's all we care about. Like, you can see that there's stuff like line color, fill color. We don't care what this is. It can be whatever, because we'll set that internally later on. Um, yeah, line color, fill color, null. Don't worry about it. We'll set that setting later, and we'll be able to use these points to create polygons and masks on our images before we start training, all right? Um, so yeah, try it with 10 images first, and uh, good luck. So there's something I forgot to mention, and that is the annotation of background. When you guys do multi-classification um, with semantic segmentation, 
you do need to explicitly define the background as a channel within your target matrix. So um, the way this is handled, or way I intended it to be handled, uh, for example, in our images, you can see that for the most part, a lot of these images have some kind of object of interest that we'd like to annotate. In the example here, like 199, this is that's all background, this is all background, and you can collect lots of different background images to help improve, like let's say you're getting false positives, like it thinks that there's an image in the background when there's really not, well you can just collect more background data. Um, the problem comes where the annotation, you need a JSON file to match that, um, that image that you captured. So the way this works and the way I built it is, so let's say I'm going to delete like 197, 198, 199 in the annotation file. So if I go here and I delete those three, there is a function within, it's in utils.py. So uh, if you go and create a test.py file, any kind of Python file, you can say from utils import, I think it's called generate missing JSON. Um, and this gets called in train.py. You can see up here, if the length of the images in the image directory and the length of the files in annotated are not equal, then we'll assume that we're missing JSON files. So what we would do is we just run generate missing JSON, which if you look at that, it's a pretty simple function, just goes in and it'll save. Here you can see it's creating a JSON file. So if you're one of those people who is using a different annotation tool, but you still want to use the same data pipeline, you can kind of follow this as a format on how to create um, your own JSON file, all right? So if you were to go over here, I don't know, say Python uh, test.py, and let me see if I make sure. Yeah, let's just call generate missing JSON, and you run that. You'll notice if you go back to annotated, those files got created. So now that will fill in your missing JSON files, um, and that will happen automatically as you run train.py. All right, so good luck with your annotating.